Okay, thanks. So I'll be talking about efficient multi-party protocols via log depth threshold formula. And this is joint work with Gil Cohen, Ivan Damgard, Yuval Ishai, Jonas Kolker, Peter Bo Milterson, and Ron Raz. Okay, so let me start by quickly reminding you what secure MPC is. Uh, so the setting that we consider is that of N mutually distrust distrustful parties that wish to jointly uh, compute some function or perform some computational task. And they want to do this securely. So what that means is that even in, if an adversary controls some limited subset of the players, that adversary learns nothing more than the inputs and the outputs of the players that it controls. And in this talk, I want to focus on the setting of perfect security, introduced by Ben Orgord, Wasser, uh, and, Wig and Wigderson, and independently by Chalm, Propo, and Damgard in ADA. And as usual in this setting, uh, we're going to assume a synchronous network with secure point-to-point -point communication channels, and the adversary is computationally unbounded. So in this setting, we have two uh, classical results. So in the passive setting, we note that every functionality can be computed as long as the adversary controls less than a half of the players. And in the active setting, if the adversary controls less than a third of the players. So these results are really beautiful, and there's been a huge body of work on secure MPC ever since. But if you look at the actual protocols, then they are fairly complicated. What we suggest is what we believe to be a conceptually simple and very flexible approach to constructing MPC protocols. And we have three building blocks. The first one is the player emulation technique, introduced in a work by Hirton Maurer from 2000. And we use it with a, sort of a different motivation, and we'll get back to that. Our second building block is a very simple construct construction of constant party MPC protocols. And lastly, and perhaps most surprisingly, a complexity theoretic construction of a threshold formula built of a, a which contains only threshold gates. And we'll see how that naturally comes up. Okay, so before I tell you how we do that, let me just mention some applications. So as I said, we get simplifications of uh, known protocols. For example, uh, in the standard setting of BGW, where you're trying to do a computation over a field, we obtain uh, what we think are very simple and natural, natural protocols. We also obtain uh, MPC protocols over other algebraic structures that have been uh, studied in the past, so over rings and uh, over groups. And in addition, we obtain some results in distributed computing for broadcast and broadcast from twocast. And let me just mention two caveats. Uh, so the first one is that the threshold that we get is only close to optimal, the threshold of uh, corrupt, corrupt players that the adversary can control. And secondly, all our protocols are efficient in the sense that they're polynomial time, but the actual polynomial may be slightly, high, slightly uh, larger than what you get from uh, the original works. In addition, we also get some new results, most notably in the setting of MPC over uh, black box groups that has been studied by Desmet et al. In, uh, uh, a few very beautiful works that, that use a lot of uh, combinatorics. So we give uh, alternate proofs that are conceptually very appealing, and they also improve. Uh, so in the passive setting, we obtain a uh, higher threshold of players that the adversary can control, and in the active setting, we obtain the first efficient protocol. Okay, so let me describe uh, how we do this, and our uh, starting, starting point is the work of Hirden Maurer from 2000, of, of, the, of the player emulation technique. So the idea is that if you look at a player in a multi-party protocol, then this uh, player is just a reactive functionality, so a functionality that preserves the state. And therefore, it can be emulated by other players that run a, a, an MPC protocol. Using this observation, we're going to show a reduction from constructing an n-party MPC protocol to that of constructing an, MP, an MPC protocol for just a constant number of players. And indeed, constructing MPC protocols for only a constant number of players is typically much easier. And one reason for that is that if you only care about a constant number of players, you can do things that are exponential in the number of players. Okay. So for simplicity, let's focus on the passive setting, even though the active setting is not much more complicated. And I'm going to show a reduction from doing an n-party MPC to a three-party MPC. The reason for three is simply, because that, simply that if you want uh, a uh, passively secure MPC protocol that's secure against one player, you need at least three players. Okay, so let's assume that we have sort of three-party MPC for any functionality, and we'll try to construct an n-party MPC. So let's start with an, N, with an MPC protocol that has a trusted party. So that's pretty easy. We have the five real players in the blue that talk to the trusted party tau. They just send their inputs to tau. Tau computes the function, say this is a secure function evaluation, and sends back the results. Simple enough. 
Now, notice that tau is just a reactive functionality, some fun functionality that maintains a state, and therefore we can emulate it by other players. So we're going to introduce three artificial or virtual players, v1, v2, and v3, that emulate whatever tau did in the previous protocol. So now tau doesn't really exist, it's being emulated by v1, v2, and v3. The players sort of send their inputs to tau, but this is just being emulated by the three-party MPC protocol between v1, v2, and v3. v1, v2, v3 jointly compute the function and send back the result to the players, okay? So notice that the initial protocol was secure as long as the adversary didn't control the trusted party. But this new protocol is secure even if the adversary controls one out of v1, v2, and v3. And the reason is that the underlying three-party protocol is secure against one corrupt player. So we gain something. We're going to go ahead and proceed doing this by emulating, emulating v1 by three additional players, w1, w2, and w3. So now we have the, the actual players in the protocol are the five original players, and in addition we have w1, w2, and w3 that are emulating whatever v1 did, and v2 and v3. So the players send their inputs to sort of tau, and this is being uh, the reactive functionality tau that's being emulated by v1, v2, and v3. v1 is being emulated by w1, w2, and w3. Why is this new protocol secure? Well, even if both W1, W2, and W3 are corrupt, this corresponds to only V1 being corrupt, which was fine in the previous protocol. So we're good with that. Alternatively, even if uh, V2 or V3 is corrupt, and one out of W1, W2, and W3 is corrupt, we're still okay. This corresponds to only sort of V2 or V3 being corrupt in the previous protocol. So we're getting sort of uh, something non-trivial here. And it's very natural to consider the following formula. So we have a formula where the output wire is tau, and every time we do an emulation step, we're going to place a three input majority gate, where the input wires correspond to the virtual parties that are emulating that party that we started with. The reason that it's a majority gate is simply that when we do this emulation, we need uh, the majority of the emulating uh, players to be honest. So we're going to do this, and we're going to associate the value of zero with honest players and one with dishonest players. We evaluate the formula. For every wire, every wire sort of corresponds to a virtual player. For every wire, we get a value, either zero or one, according to the computation of the formula, including to the output wire, of course, which corresponds to the trusted party. If uh, the trusted party gets a value of zero, it means that uh, the protocol is secure. Okay. So let's assume that somehow we have some sort of uh, this uh, formula composed only of three input majority gates, and we're just going to uh, go ahead and keep doing these emulations according to the, the, the formula. At the end, when we reach the leaves, we'll just let the real players emulate the virtual player, players that correspond to the leaves. So as before, the protocol is going to be secure as long as the set of players that the adversary controls, if you place uh, ones on them and zero on the other players, you evaluate the formula. As long as uh, the output wire has a value of zero, the protocol is secure. So now suppose that the formula that we had in our hands computed the majority function. So it's a formula that's composed of uh, three input majority gates and it computes the majority function. So in this case, what it means is that uh, as long as the adversary controls less than half of the players, the formula outputs zero, and therefore the protocol is secure. So exactly as in BGW. Okay, that's the basic idea of the reduction. In terms of complexity, every time we're doing an, emu an emulation step, every atomic operation of the emulating, the party that's being emulated is being replaced by a constant number of uh, operations by the emulating parties. So as we go along this formula, at every layer, we're paying a constant factor, and therefore the complexity is exponential in the depth. So if we want an efficient protocol, we better have a logarithmic depth formula. Okay, so let me do a quick comparison with the work of uh, Hirton Maurer. So Hirton Maurer introduced this uh, technique of recursive player emulation. They had a different idea, a different motivation in mind. They were trying to handle what are known as general adversary structures. So this is a situation in which the adversary doesn't necessarily control a particular threshold of the players, but it control either this set or that set and so forth. And indeed, they use this uh, technique to obtain exponential protocols for a very rich class of adversary structures called Q2. In particular, for the case where the adversary controls less than half of the players, the protocol is also exponential. 
we follow this basic approach, but because we focus only on this case of uh, an adversary that con controls less than half of the players, we obtain an efficient protocol. Okay, so we're basically missing two steps now. First of all, we need a secure three-party protocol. And secondly, we need this uh, majority construction, so a logarithmic depth formula that computes the majority function and uses only three input majority gates. And we can't afford to use any constant or negation gates. Constants correspond to sort of saying that player is honest, so we can't afford constants. So let me start by, this, by describing the three-party protocol. Well, of course we can just use BGW restricted to three players. That's already simpler than the full-fledged BGW, but we can do much better. So there's this protocol of malware from O2 called MPC Made Simple. It's a really simple, uh, as in the title, it's a very simple, very elegant protocol based on replicated secret sharing. Its major downside is that it's exponential in the number of players. But as long as we only care about three players, you know, exponential in three is not so bad. So we can afford that. So that's our underlying three-party protocol. And this works, uh, okay. Uh, the second item that we need is uh, this formula. So a logarithmic depth formula that computes the majority function using only three input majority gates. And let me just note that this is a really interesting complexity theoretic question, even uh, without this application to MPC. And indeed, it has been uh, studied by complexity theorists. So to, to obtain such a formula, we can go to a work from a Valiant from 84, and implicit in this work is a randomized construction of a, such a majority for majorities formula. By randomized construction, what I mean is that there is some algorithm that tosses coins and with very high probability outputs a formula that computes the majority function correctly on every input. So if we use this formula of, uh, of valiance, we obtain a protocol with st statistical security. And the reason is that the first thing that the parties do is sort of construct a formula, and there is some very small probability of error, and, uh, in which case they lose security. So we obtain some negligible statistical error. Alternatively, we show sort of a partial de-randomization of valiance formula, which is a construction of such a formula that computes an approximate majority. So it only wor works if at least, say, 51% of the inputs are one or 51% are zero. And exactly in between, uh, you don't have a guarantee. And this is sort of a, a point that, uh, th this uh, is one of the more technically challenging parts of this work. And I won't have time to discuss this, but please come and ask me if you're interested. And actually, we can do better than 51%. We can go all the way down to one half plus something that's going fairly rapidly to zero. So if we use this construction, we obtain a protocol with perfect security, but we only obtain a close to optimal threshold. So not exactly one half of the players, a little bit less. Lastly, we also show a full de-randomization of valiance uh, formula, but we use de-randomization assumptions. So one way to state this is that if, say, exponentially strong one-way functions exist, then uh, we can de-randomize valiance formula and obtain an explicit construction that works on every input. So this gives us perfect security uh, and the optimal threshold, but it's a conditional result. Okay, let me also say a few words about uh, active security. So in the active setting, we're going to follow the same paradigm, more or less, except that instead of doing a reduction from an n-party protocol to a three-party protocol, we're going to reduce to a four-party protocol. And the reason, as you can guess, is that if we want to obtain a non-trivial uh, protocol in the active setting, we need at least four players. So we're going to do this emulation, this recursive emulation steps, except that every time now, every party is going to be uh, emulated by four parties. And so the formula that we need is not the majority formula, but rather, so the gates that we need, instead of majority gates, they are two out of four threshold gates. And that's because the underlying four-party protocol is, secure, uh, is insecure if two or more of the players are corrupt. So the underlying gates that we need are two out of four threshold gates. And the function that we're trying to evaluate is not the majority function, but rather the one-third threshold function, simply because that's sort of the best we can hope for in the active setting. And indeed, we construct such a formula, so a logarithmic depth formula uh, with these sort of threshold gates that computes a threshold function. It doesn't, it's also an approximate uh, result, so it only works if there's some promise that the number of ones is not exactly, uh, not very, very close to one-third. And again, we can do, uh, we can go all the way to one third plus something that's going to zero. So pretty close. Okay, let me uh, wrap up with some uh, conclusions and open questions. 
So first of all, I wanted to uh, point out that this methodology is very general. So as I said in the beginning, we use it in all kinds of different settings for uh, rings, for groups, and so forth. And uh, if you have some MPC setting in which you want to obtain an end party protocol, you can follow this methodol methodology by first constructing a hopefully simple protocol for only a constant number of players, and then uh, prove that player emulation works in this setting. And then sort of you can use our formula for free and obtain an end party protocol. Secondly, I want to point out that this work shows sort of an intriguing connection to some uh, problems that uh, are still open in complexity theory. So the first one is sort of a full de-randomization de of valence formula. So an explicit exact construction of a majority function that uses only three input majority gates. Um, so that's not, it's not known. Our solution only gives uh, an approximate majority. And secondly, uh, construction for a threshold from threshold kind of formula, as we saw, as we needed in the active setting. Uh, so we only have an approximate solution there. So it would be great to have an exact solution. And in this setting, we don't even have a non-explicit or a randomized construction. So even that would be really, really nice. So thank you. We have time for questions. Um, so I have one question. If um, the um, first open question that you had is solved, that you give more efficient constant party protocols, I missed what you had said would be the effect on the uh, results. So that you I doubt it. I think there are some results on how good of a, a formula you can get for Valiant. So I think even a non-explicit construction has some lower bounds. And I think the known MPC protocols are better than what's known, than, than that, that lower bound. So, so if you have, uh, you're, you're basically paying exponentially in the depth of the formula, and there is some lower bound on the depth that you could uh, hope for, and I think exponential in that lower bound is higher than what's known. But I'm not 100% sure about that. Okay. There's a question. Is it My, possible? Yeah, okay. My question. On the uh, majority for majorities, you say have formula. Uh, and I have to ask, you mean formula or circuit? So uh, because it's logarithmic depth, you can transform a circuit into a formula. Right, but um, you, it can grow exponentially depending on whether or not you allow sub-expressions. Sorry? Depending on whether or not you allow sub-expressions or to be consolidated into an intermediate value or no, not. So I, th I think you can go from a logarithmic depth circuit into a logarithmic depth formula without paying too much. OK. Um, but I can take it out, describe that offline. Run, so what's quickly. The, what's, uh, um, what is the size of the formula? Is um, it like polynomial in there, I guess? What's the so it should be um, sort of, I think, exponential in the depth. Right. Um, so the actual polynomial. Well, specifically, you have like, you know, you, you have n players and you want to compute majority using majorities of three. Yeah. So I guess you have some uh, order log n depths and what's the size? Right, so, so I think in valence construction, the actual O of log n, if I'm not mistaken, it's five log n. Yeah. And so you get a size of, which is uh, n to the and five. Oh, like full and and in our de-randomization, I have no idea. Though I'm guessing it's not, they're very small. So it will be actually bigger, I guess, so I see. Yeah, yeah. And I guess my, I, probably answers my second question. So I think valence thing was used in this collective coin flipping of Fagi at some point, if I remember correctly. Um, uh, I, think, I don't uh, think I'm familiar with that. But, okay, uh, then I'll take it offline. Yeah, okay. Thanks. <laughs>